I'm Jim Kircher. I'm old enough to remember, you know, I think I've been saying that a lot lately, but I am old enough to remember just barely being a kid in a shoe store and looking into the x-ray machine to see if my new shoes fit. These things were called fluoroscopes and they were pretty common from the 1930s through the 1950s. It was really more gimmick than helpful tool. But you could look in, actually everybody could, mom, dad, you, the shoe salesman, all could look in to see how the bones in your toes were fitting into that new pair of shoes. Thing is, you could do it just for fun and you could do it often. Now, nobody knows if it really did us, or more likely the shoe salesman, much damage. But the shoe store x-ray machines were banned. What's amazing to us now is that even back then, people knew radiation could be beneficial. They also knew it could kill you. They knew it was something you shouldn't mess with, but they did anyway. Now, this was all a rather long way to get us to the cemetery and to our first story from a much earlier time about messing with stuff that can kill you. Our guide was Carol Shepley. She wrote a book called Movers and Shakers, Scalawags and Suffragettes, Tales from Bell Fountain Cemetery. And she had taken us to this ornate monument, the resting place of one Kate Brewington Bennett. And she was the most beautiful woman in town. Every obituary always says that. She was the most beautiful woman in town. If they don't say it, then you think, oh, the poor dear. <laughs> right, right. She was 37 years old when she died in 1855 and might have left, as they say, a beautiful corpse. A pale complexion was considered a mark of beauty, and so to be beautiful, she took little doses of arsenic. Well, the idea of arsenic having medicinal qualities... For more on what might have actually happened, we went to see a chemist at the St. Louis College of Pharmacy. And there is some evidence that indicates that arsenic will improve one's complexion, uh, skin will become paler, you'll get rosy cheeks, from the uh, breaking of blood vessels, but you will get a, a, an effect. This belongs in the shoulda known better file. Long before Kate Bennett's time, arsenic was well known as a poison, quick, tasteless, and undetectable. And in small doses, it was, and to some extent still is, used medicinally. But in Kate Bennett's time, it was becoming popular for women of her race or class to take, even though they weren't sick. And for the story about how that happened, we cue the zither music. You see, there were stories about these folks in the Austrian Alps who regularly consumed rather large quantities of arsenic. And the story said these zither-playing peasants were plump and healthy, rosy-cheeked, let's say passionate, and had boundless energy for going up and down the mountains. There were also apparently some pretty serious side effects, but people weren't hearing about those or they weren't paying attention to that part of the story. In Kate Bennett's time and into the 20th century, you could buy packages of arsenic wafers, arsenic soap, as a beauty regimen to enhance the skin they worked so hard to keep out of the sun. After all, bronze skin on a white woman meant you worked outside. It was sort of like having calluses on your hands. And so there were lots of products on the market, specifically arsenic type products, that could make a claim, hey, this is gonna make your skin clear up. Hey, this is going to take care of maybe some lethargy that you're feeling. And so people would take these patent medicines in, in the hopes of, of improving their quality of life. Arsenic will be cleared in the body. It takes, takes between 12 and 24 hours, sometimes as many as 48. But if you are constantly dosing yourself with arsenic, you're never really going to have an opportunity to totally clear that molecule out of your body. Arsenic is cumulative, not realizing right. that they thought a lot was so it affected her complexion. Made her look really pale, which they consider beautiful. Right. And and then it killed her. So she died only in her thirties, was it thirty seven? Yeah. But nobody really knows if Kate Bennett's problem was too much vanity or too little tolerance. One of the key questions that I would ask is how much arsenic was she taking? How was she getting that source? If she was going to different sources, there might be different amounts of arsenic. The analytical chemistry of the time may not have allowed for people to really know how much they were putting in. And there was no FDA at the time. And, and we did not have an FDA that was 
uh, really monitoring the patent medicines that people were taking. Arsenic, the popular over-the-counter version of one era, eventually ended up like the old shoe store x-ray machine of my youth, and better judgment prevailed. 